I'm here with Dr. Romano to review condensation reactions. Hi, I'm Dr. Romano. I'm headmaster here at Romano Scientific. I'd like to go over two very important questions today with you on condensation reactions. So come around and let me show you what we have. First thing I want you to do is I want you to look at problem number one, which is a short bet on the dot exam. You have an aldehyde. Now, if you ever see an aldehyde or a ketone, a simple ketone that has an alpha hydrogen and you treat it with dilute acid or dilute base, a reaction known as an aldol condensation occurs. Let me first show you how you would do this on the DAT exam at lightning speed. The minute you see this, you're always going to assume you have two moles. So you have an aldehyde with an alpha hydrogen and dilute base. The first thing that you're going to do is you're going to remove off the alpha hydrogen. And you would get this from the first mole. What you then do is you get your finger and you touch the carbonyl of the second molecule. So the second molecule, which I'll put here, this carbon is this. And what's attached to that? A CH3, NH, and the O you broke. And all you would do is add an H. And you get this final product, and that's called an aldol product. So what we've just done is the aldol condensation. Let's go over how it really occurred, though, so you can understand the mechanics. In the very first step, the base came in, removed the alpha hydrogen, and formed this intermediate known as an enolate anion. This enol and anion is very stable because it's got resonance. I didn't draw the resonance form in here, but I'm hoping you can see it. What you would do on the resonance form is simply move these electrons here and move this out. But at any rate, once you have the enolate formed, that enolate is now the nucleophile, and it attacks the second molecule of the aldehyde, which is the electrophile. There's the attack. Electrons move out. And then finally, you pick up a final H to finish off the final product. Hopefully, you can see what I've done. You should at least understand all these different steps on the aldol for the data exam. So remember, just remove the alpha hydrogen from one and attach it on to the carbonyl carbon of the second. Let's do a challenge problem. We have one like this in the Dat Destroyer. We've got this compound. How would we name such a compound, by the way? The aldehyde is the first priority as far as families go. So I would call this compound 6-oxo-hep-to-now. Notice that the aldehyde gets the family name. That's the main parent. So what I'm going to do is to take this compound called 6 oxo hep to now treat it with dilute base and acid. We got some decisions to make. The question is, we see it's an aldol, but where do I take the H off? Do I take the H off from the outside? Do I take it off from this alpha hydrogen? Or perhaps this alpha hydrogen? So carbon number two, carbon number five, and carbon number seven all have alpha protons. So the question is, which one do I remove? If you remove number seven, what you would do is then you would do an attack, an intramolecular attack. I hope you see this. Whenever there's two functional groups, you should be thinking that there could be a ring formed. If you went from here to here, you would form one, two, three, four, five, a seven-membered ring. A seven-membered ring usually is not so stable. I don't think so. Let's see if we can do better. If we would remove five, five could attack one, and that would result in a five-membered ring. Or number two could attack number six. So both of them are possible, and they both seem plausible. I remember I asked my professor that question, and his answer was this. If you have a choice, like we do now, and you get the same type of ring system, the rule I want you to use is the rule he gave me. Always attack the aldehyde. The aldehyde is the more reactive entity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove off the H on 5, form the enolate, and attack. Come around on this blackboard over here where I worked the problem out for you, and let's have a look on what I did. Now, as you can see here, 
We have the same compound, so there's my carbon. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. In the very first step, I removed off the alpha hydrogen off of number five, and I formed an enolate. And if you wanted to draw a resonance form with me, this moved over, you would form, this is a resonance form. Now, what I did here is I labeled very meticulously the carbon, so no one gets lost. I put one in red, that says carbon A, B, C, D, and E. So instead of using numbers, we'll use letters. A is going to attack E. That's your best bet on the data. If you ever saw a question like this, just label it. So as you can see, if A attacks E, notice how I wrote it. What I'm going to do is loop this around. There's my A, then there's my B, C, D, E. This double bond opened up. And as you can see, E attaches to A. I hope you can see that. And then F, which I labeled up here as this O, which is here, picked up an H, and there's your final compound. I hope this helps. And then just as a check, if you labeled it, A has the CH3CO coming off it, then B, C, D, all CH2 groups, and then E is the carbon with the OH, and then I'm hoping you can see that A and E are connected. This is an aldol cyclization. That's a question for a guy that's looking for the 30 on the dat. You'll probably get much easier questions, but a little overkill is sometimes a good thing because it gives you some deep understanding on the concepts. So when you go to the actual dat, it'd be a piece of cake. Okay, I hope that helps on a very important topic. All right, good luck to you, and I'll see you in study group. Bye-bye.